do need to be cracking ahead now, so can I see Peter Green to move the Economic Policy Commission report? Thank you. Um, I do prefer Pete um, to Peter. There's a quibble. Um, conference, we are facing a situation which is summed up in the opening page of this document in front of you, uh, where things are not going to get any better, uh, economically, for the vast majority of us. It, to sum up, I'm not going to go out, I'm not going to sit here and stand here, I should say, and tell you how bad everything is, because you wouldn't be here if you didn't realise that. Um, what we can say is that what we are going to get is a lot of guff over the next few months about recovery, the economy getting better and so on, and the toys are going to play that for their worth. The truth is it will still be a recovery for the few. And I really mean the few. I mean a tiny minority. Um, I want to actually briefly say something about Tony Benn and make... You know, this is not, by the way, this is a collective document, and I, I haven't checked on this bit, but I'm, I, think, I hope it'll be okay. My little personal tribute. Tony Benn used to say, I've heard him say this several times, he said, look, the working class, the labour movement, spent centuries, from the levellers onwards, arguing for political democracy, and eventually that was won. It might have taken two or three hundred years, but it was won as a result of struggles, not because of the people in power giving it because they felt like it, but because people fought and argued for it. What we didn't win, and what we still haven't won, is economic democracy. And Tony Benn made a big thing about this. He used to go and say, really what's at stake, what's a real threat to democracy, is the concentration of wealth and power in the hands of a tiny number of people. And if you want to, you know, the recognition that that is certainly still the case, all you had to do was to look at the thing that the Oxfam report that came out the other week that said there are five families in this country that possess more wealth than the bottom 20% of the whole population. And one could go on with further figures like that. It's just an extreme case. I don't want to say that all we're concerned about is five families, but I do want to say we live in a rotten, lousy system currently being run by a bunch of very nasty rich kids. And what they have in store for us over the next, if they win the next election, by the way, these nasty rich kids, if you looked at the budget details, is a further round of £40 billion pounds plus of cuts in public spending, which is going to mean more uh, pain, hurt, death for many of the poorest people in this country. Now, having said that, um, I want to say something about the document that we ha you have in front of us and why... We need an alternative, and clearly Labour isn't offering any alternative, as has already been mentioned, hasn't it? The, the, you know, the only 13 MPs voting against a welfare cap. Um, the sort of thing we need, however, I think it's important that we're clear about the difference between basic principles and immediate demands. And I'm afraid I think some people don't quite get the distinction. Um, basic principles are the sort of principles we've already voted on at the founding conference. Principles of socialism, of environmentalism, of feminism. Principles of sustainable development. Principles that are, in fact, we've taken it a step further in the document. We've, we've emphasised the principle from each according to their ability to each according to their need. And I think that's a very radical statement. But there are people who seem to think that anything less than the full, you know, socialist programme, a maximum program, as they used to call it, isn't good enough. Well, actually, I mean, you should go back and look at what Marx did with the First International, by the way, and I really urge people to read it, you know. It, Marx supported and wrote up a reformist programme for the First International back in 1866. Go away, have a look at it. Check it out. Um, and why did he do that? Because he was seeking to unite people from different traditions across the labour movement in Britain, just as we are seeking to do. And we're not abandoning our principles if we say, right now, what we need to focus on is what unites us. And what can unite us is a series of basic, immediate demands for change. And they say... One minute, it's, one minute. One minute, thank you. They say all the things that are said in the documents. I won't read about, because um, I would run out of time. But I'll single out two, in particular. They're the same sort of demands, by the way, some of the same sort of demands are coming out of the People's Assembly, that are coming out of the trade union movement, and so forth. But we're also saying, above all else, we single out taking over the banks, challenging the power of finance and the city in this country. This is not going to be easy. Don't fool ourselves that they are not going to oppose this, these bankers, these financiers, these people who shift money around the globe at a, you know, a whim, a stroke on the keyboard. They are going to oppose it precisely because it will threaten their power. 
because it will be seen as something which shifts dramatically, if we put, for, push through the whole of the draft here, it will shift dramatically the balance of forces the, and the allocation of resources in this country. No, it isn't a full socialist programme, but nor do we, are we, by, by going for this, we are actually going to unite a whole section of the people who have really had enough. Thank you. Just formally seconded for me, so we can thank you. Okay, um, what, what the procedure will, will be now that that has been moved, we'll take movers of the amendments and then we'll move into general discussion from the floor. So, um, can I see the uh, mover of Amendment 1A from Leamington Spa? Yeah, and Micheline, can you get ready as well? Morning Conference, Ali McGregor, Leamington Spa. I want to move this amendment on a, a citizen's wage based on something that Pete's just said, the, the dem democratisation of wealth. Um, we have put in the, the amendment that we want the basic to be at least what people get now when they're on benefits, but we're looking a bit further than that, and we would uh, recommend a starting point of, I don't know, £25,000, which is the average wage today, um, uh, for everybody, regardless of whether they work or whether they don't work, whether they're ill, whether they're disabled, whatever. Everybody to get uh, a dem democratic, um, um, award if you like so that they can live a decent life and we would use the, the average wage as a start point. Michelin? Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of it. Um, can you all hear me? Yeah. 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 Um, I was really disappointed to see that this issue of the unconditional basic income had been dismissed in my view, before we've even begun the debate about it. I think it's a very exciting idea. Um, I don't think we can go back to the future. I don't, you know, I think there are many issues that need a lot of debate. I don't believe we've ever had full employment. If you want to use, if you want to involve disabled people in your concept of who is human, we've never had full employment. In those times, where we were supposed to have, most disabled people were still languishing in institutions or work centres or begging on the streets. And um, it's not a future I want to go back to. Thank you very much. Okay, can I have an indication of speakers for from the floor, please? And speaking, Comrade Dan. <laughs> the amendment. The amendment. Yeah, this is on the amendment. We'll take the vote on the overall at the end. Yeah, Kenny uh, Lundy from uh, Glasgow branch. Comrades, uh, that, that last paragraph that they've put on, on that thing is it's just based on pure ignorance. The, 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 the people who are involved in the Commission, most of them uh, aren't interested in citizens' income, or at least if they are, they haven't done the reading. Um, what, what we needed, and what has never happened, is, is for someone to have a, a socialist case for a citizen's income, for a basic income. Um, there's, we need plenty of time to do that. The idea that you can just dismiss it in a paragraph like, like, like that is ridiculous. As regards how much it should be, well, it shouldn't be based on money. The, 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 yes, we should have credit for people, and that is part of it. What it should be based on is resources. We all need a home, we all need food, we all need to survive. Um, all to, and it doesn't matter, you know, you, you could be a middle class person in business, your business can go to its up, excuse my language, and, and, and that person is just as entitled to, benefit, to, to, to the basic income as any, any of the rest of us. But of course, the vast majority of people who, 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 are, who are going to benefit from, these, from this are unemployed people, disabled people, uh, 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 
women working at home, mothers, um, and you know all of, all the people who can get access to good full-time employment. The idea to, to, to dismiss it like this is just stupid. John Penny, Crew Branch, and also a member of the Economic Policy Committee. We looked at this in some detail, actually, comrades, who have actually been debating the issue for many, many months online, and many of us have actually looked into the long ideological history of this concept. And basically, comrades, we think that it is a very defensive, defeatist line taken by those who want people to have a citizen's income. Of course, it comes from a very dodgy ideological background. A lot of the right would be very happy to dismantle the entire welfare state, share out the money, and people, until they had a severe illness or long unemployment, would be very happy that once they actually needed long-term care, they would find that the principle of from each according to their needs would be impossible to actually meet. Our ambition is to have a fully comprehensive welfare state. Our ambition is to have minimum wage legislation to safeguard people in their wages. Our aim is to get rid of all the trade union legislation that stops our trade union movement from providing defence for our working class people. Our ambition is to actually tax the rich to pay for a proper, fully comprehensive welfare state that will support all people regardless of their level of need. This, with its deeply dodgy ideological background, is a complete distraction from us actually carrying out a socialist program, uh, program comrades. It is the leaking into, the bleeding into the socialist movement of a very right-wing idea. We must reject it, comrades, and go for a socialist program. Is well have an indication of another speaker against? So in favour of the amendment. Sorry, in favour of the amendment. Richard. Richard Atkins from Cheshire West. Um, just take up this issue of the ideology, as John Penny puts it. Um, a great quote from Marx, from each according to their ability, to each according to their means. We have a capitalist version of that in place now, which is called the means test. Think about it, from each according to their ability, to each according to their means. That is what they do with things like income support. That is how the system works now. Um, that is why, to defend ourselves under capitalism, we need something more than that. We need to go beyond the present model of welfare, into, into some like universal basic income. But this whole thing needs more discussion. There may be more, dis more debate about this online. I haven't seen it. Um, we need a far wider debate on this discussion, and it certainly shouldn't be foreclosed by paragraph 41. So I support Mr. Lean's uh, amendments. We've got time for another speaker against, if one wants to show. Against the amendment. Maria Pedarek from Liverpool uh, branch. The reason that I am against the amendment is because it wants to substitute and delete, delete paragraph 40, which is the main principle that we are all united around is for a socialist reconstruction. So we should not delete paragraph 40. That's my issue. But I am... 41. So it's become 41. It's become 41. I know. It's just the number it's changed. Sorry. It's the number change. Okay, still don't, still don't delete paragraph 41 because it says that we need a... Um, I'm sorry, you're confusing. Yeah, you're confusing. <laughs> so the alternative is to promote full employment. I'm sorry, I thought I yeah. came, when I came up, I thought I was, I was talking to protect paragraph 40. So I can... You are. Hello. Can I, can I just clarify? Hello again. 